Hey, what's up, guys? Aaron here, and welcome back to another episode of my F122 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 81 today for the Canadian GP in Season 5. If you guys did miss the previous one around Singapore, then be sure to go check that one out. Before you see this one, that was a disaster class for Ferrari as we saw Verstappen's engine blow up right in front of us. And uh, it was a tough one. You know, we still had a very good result, actually, all things considered, but it felt difficult because Felipe Drogovic was in the form of his life around that episode. Um, just didn't seem like we were catching him at any point. We tried something clever with a two-stop, but then we got a bit hampered with a poorly timed safety car with a few other slower cars out of sync blocking us. And in the end, it just didn't seem like it was going to be our day to get that race win. But you know what? The fact that we're disappointed by getting second place and a fast slap is a testament to how quick and consistent we have been this season. We're still yet to be outside the top five when we finished a race. So that is something to be proud of and why we've still got a commanding lead in this Drivers Championship is we're now, you know, well into that nearly the last third of the season and we're eyeing up, you know, trying to just rack up the points. And as I've said before, I would not be against trying to get this done before the final race because we, as you guys have known, if you watched along with the series, for all these 80 episodes gone by. We've been burnt enough in the Drivers' Championship and not being able to get it over the line. But today, maybe a challenge. Canada is one of my favourite circuits on the F1 game, but we actually, unfortunately, have to take some engine penalties because our engine's been getting quite worn doing the various practice programmes, trying to build up as many R&D points as we can for a regulation change that I feel like probably should be on its way since we didn't have one last season and we're all now at nearly, near enough max time. That car so I'd be very surprised if there wasn't to be fair at the moment I think we're probably good with R&D points you know someone pointed out we've got a ridiculous amount of like over 23,000 but I'm sure the AI teams who have been plateauing like us since like round two have altered that stage but yeah there was a recent patch on this game that they adjusted the wear levels of the engine components doing quick practice programs in my opinion I think they overdid it because now we've got more worn out components and having to take penalties than we did last last season. I know we had a lot of failures last season, but that was a, those were random failures. This wasn't. This is actually due to engine wear. So, we're having to take a penalty a little bit earlier in the season than I thought we would. And it just doesn't make any sense because we've got so many durability upgrades now compared to previous seasons, and we've never had wear like this before. So, I think they maybe just overdid it slightly. But, anyways, it is what it is. Um, you know, we're going to have to just take, uh, take it on the head. And, to be fair, this race might be one of the best ones to do it at because I think we do have genuine lot of race pace around here in comparison to next race at Miami, for example, and I think we'll maybe try and, you know, schedule one in for Mexico, because that's usually a great place to take it with that long straight, but into this race weekend, then everyone bar Ferrari staying the same, but Ferrari, surprisingly, make a further little upgrade and gain there, so I think maybe now they are fully maxed out, and obviously, following a double DNF, that is a stern response from the Italian outfit to try and bounce back from that bitter disappointment around Singapore, because both Schumacher and Verstappen happened. We're in the top five. They look quick. You know, they've both gone into P2 and 3. So it, what went from a double podium to a double DNF for them. So they're wanting to bounce back in style here around Canada. But there's going to be stiff competition as there has been the whole time. But for us, I mean, on Saturday... Now it doesn't really mean too much for us to get through because we know we're going to be all the way at the back of the grid now with the penalties we've taken. There was a bit of traffic on my first run. You'll notice on the top left there, Perez on Inters because it was actually raining at the start of Q1. It dried out in time right at the end of the session to go uh, onto the slick tyres. But then we just had a very weird lap ar around the circuit. Lawson got in my way. Then I overtook Russell because he was on an outlap and then he tried to dive for me back into the hairpin so yeah if I was actually going for a proper good lap and wanting to definitely get through into Q2 I probably would have been more frustrated with this lap basically and the traffic I kind of met and how the drivers were handling it around there but it won't, it won't really matter in the end but we do actually manage to still get through into Q2 because for whatever reason you saw how bone dry the circuit was 
from P9 downwards, no one bothered to go out on another set of soft tyres. So it meant that both Aston Martins booked themselves in to Q2. Only one Golf Porsche Williams does, because Ocon made a mistake there. Sonoda, what is he doing? Why? Why is he not gone out? I'll never know. So he's out. Carlos Sainz, another big name in the Audi Sport team. So yeah, very, very peculiar. Ironically, maybe if I didn't go out, because knowing I had a penalty to send me to the back of the grid, Sonoda would have actually made it through. But that's not really an excuse. I don't know why or no earth our other side of the garage didn't send him out whilst we went out i feel like there should be a correlation of oh if your teammates going you should probably get sent out as well so yeah a bit of a weird one there in uh, q1 why some didn't go and some others did so uh the fact we did make it through into q2 means i can actually watch the ai do their thing and see who's looking quick to be fair because i i'm not going to bother setting lap time myself it really won't matter uh in terms of like even playing tactically trying to push other people out we've got the points in the championship for it. I don't need to be doing anything funny tactically trying to get through into Q3. I'd rather actually just save my engine components knowing that they're now wearing out more in quick practice. So we're just kind of watching uh, Rarity, watching the AI do qualifying because we don't get to watch them once you move on into the next session and you're out of the session. So uh, like I said, we won't watch the top 10 shootout, but these are the people who are in uh, included in that. Both Repsol Haas cars, both Mercs, Ferraris, both Red Bulls, surprisingly, and then one Golf Porsche Williams of Magnussen, Alain Stroll just about doesn't make it through, but pretty solid for Aston Martin there to be P11 and P14 as they still try and unlock and use the potential of their now upgraded car this season, and uh, Magnussen will be hoping the same, but Ferrari, well, in the wet, maybe that's equalised it a little bit, and Haas with Drogovic and both Mercedes cars gained a bit more pace. We'll see how it goes in the top 10 shootout, and then the race, of course, but I wouldn't be surprised if at least one of the Ferraris is going for the front row, but Drogovic seems in fine form, got the race win at Singapore, might be going for pole position here. So that means on Sunday tomorrow, with us at the other end of the grid, at the back, we're going to have to be full out attack, trying to recover and limit the damage. Let's go to Sunday's race. We're back once again beside the St. Lawrence River here in Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix. The event first moved to the variant of this track back in 1978, and it was won by none other than Gilles Villeneuve, the first Canadian to ever win his home race, and in whose honor the circuit would be renamed. With top speeds of around 210 miles per hour heading into the overtaking opportunity of turn 13, the 2.7 miles of the circuit Gilles Villeneuve are some of the quickest on the Formula One calendar. There are 14 corners in total, with 60% of the lap taken at full throttle and average speeds clock in at about 130 miles per hour. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Felipe Drogovic lines up on pole position. Edging out Max Verstappen, who'll start from P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Leclerc, Bottas, Mick Schumacher and Magnussen, Norris, Albon, Vettel and George Russell, Stroll, Oscar Piastri, Pierre Gasly and Hülkenberg, Liam Lawson, Sonoda, Esteban Ocon and Sergio Perez, Fernando Alonso, Sainz, Ricardo and the owner driver. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. And with me today, of course, is Natalie Pinkham. We should talk about Williams. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within the team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that has definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. So from the back of the grid, we've got to try and limit the damage to our closest rivals, Felipe Drogovic, on another pole position. But it was mighty fine, it seemed there, according to that grid sequence, with Verstappen in second place. Leclerc's there as well, but he's not really been the same man he was in the first few races of this season. So I'm less concerned about him. But to be honest, I'm just going to go out there and try and climb up as quick as we can. We're starting on the medium tyres looking to maybe go to either the hard compound for a one-stop or we can switch it to a two-stop. That's why we've chosen the mediums to 
open up that window, just kind of see where the race is at. And then I and then made our decision. Of course, at Singapore, it didn't work out for us. At Canada, though, because of the tyre wear levels, because the circuit's a bit different, and the time loss in the pit lane, a two-stop really can work around here if you've got the outright speed, which I'm confident we do have, as I always am, around Montreal. So here we go then to five red lights. The Canadian Grand Prix from the back of the grid. Lights out, and away we go. But it's going to be a pretty pedestrian one for us into turn one. We get a great start versus Ricardo on the soft tyres, but then we just get boxed in. And this is a case of playing the patient game, not trying to get too desperate with it, and just wait for the spaces to open up. We've actually stayed in last place here, technically, as we're jockeying for position with Ricardo. Nipping down his inside. Then you've got uh, Alonso getting squeezed out by Carlos Sainz. So we get one more position there. Sainz blocks me off on the left. And he goes for the dive bomb I want to do, to do on him. And he's going to try and get Esteban Ocon. So again, just having to just bite my tongue and be a bit patient there. Not get too aggy with these AI. Because uh, Canada, it's not exactly a street circuit. But, the, you know, the water are very close and fine around this Montreal park and uh, so we need to just you know wait for the moves to come to us basically like they did there with Esmen Ocon completely got squeezed out and then here we'll just nip down the inside Perez locks up and holds up Carlos Sainz so I think thank you very much then the rear end just steps out for absolutely no reason may have just been the right rear on the curb um, I, I didn't even think I was on that much throttle to be honest but that is just the, the physics of the game sometimes spiking the wheel spin but we're going to finish the move off on Carlos Sainz and we're going to end lap one in P18. Meanwhile, Dragovic up there setting a purple lap time. So probably clearly still in first place compared to Verstappen. But look at ahead of us. We've got a whole gaggle and mess of cars fighting for position. Piastri now side by side with Sergio Perez. Hulkenberg and Lawson getting caught up in it. So this is our chance maybe to get some easy passes done and catapult ourselves up four positions. We're going to go down the inside of Lawson. He puts up a pretty stern fight though through that first chicane and now having to wait patiently to the last, uh, the back end of the, uh, of the lap to get Hulkenberg in a straight line and try and catch a toe from Perez to just help us finish off that move into the break zone. But Perez actually working his way up nicely up this grid as well, but we're now trying to spoil his party and be the lead man trying to cut his way through on the inside. We go of the Mexican. It's going to be very fine though because Checo really gets the elbows out through turns two as DRS is now activated in this race. A, a dash of battery on the exit is going to get us ahead also, I think, because Perez again comes back so, to be fair, puts up a real stern fight, but we're finally booking in that P15 and we'll chase after Piastri as we're in a checkerboard of McLaren as Sonoda's P13, Gasly P12 and then further up the road well Lando Norris looks like he's struggling because there's a big gap to Albon ahead of him and he's holding up the drivers behind but on lap 3 I was feeling something a bit odd on the turn-ins as we entered that lap and I asked my engineer and you saw there on the heads up display, somewhere we picked up a tiny tap on the front wing bit of damage, I don't know exactly where that was. I can't recall where there was, there was a car on our right hand side one of those battles so even though we've tried our hardest to keep it clean somewhere along the line we've uh, just tapped that front wing so we've now got a little bit of understeer coming in on the front end but it's not too horrendous right now but we will probably look to try and change that at the pit stop because you can see a few times down the exit of these corners we're getting some oversteer but that's not going to stop us overtaking Piastri but like I said Lando Norris is struggling in this race and he continues to struggle and it it may just be because of some brake issues as that Red Bull Honda and he goes straight on there. He lets Sebastian Vettel by and now Lance Stroll, the Aston Martin, is attacking the Red Bull Honda. It really is a change of landscape right now here in Formula 1. Aston Martin all of a sudden looking quicker than a Red Bull on pure pace here and Lando Norris is just struggling to slow the car down. I mean, look how quickly Vettel's got away from all of them. Such as, uh, that's how much he was holding them all up to the point where if you look in the background there, you'll be able to see the gold rear wing of my car and Sonoda's. We're all bunching up and we've got these four cars now right ahead of us. Stroll, surprisingly, still hasn't finished off the move, but into the final corners. Norris locks up. He comes across the circuit and nearly takes out Sonoda. And we just about cut in tight on the left-hand side. Unorthodox racing line, but it got us two positions because if I kept it right... 
Probably would have been a horrendous crash with Yuki or Norris, but instead we've got two for one up into P12. So that's a bit more like it. Lap six, that's pretty good progress, actually. And hopefully we'll get past Gasly and Stroll with some sort of ease. I know we're all kind of pretty equalised on pace, but I feel like we've just been driving so well this season, especially this circuit. Even with the damage, I'm not finding it too horrendous. Like, I'm driving around it braking a little bit early or trying to get the nose turned in earlier on purpose knowing it's going to understeer and we're gaining in the brake zones on Gasly so can we maybe send one down the inside of the hairpin we're quite far back but the way you roll the car into here you can just keep on rolling it we do go a bit deep there because I couldn't get it slowed down that's the damage we've got on the front wing Gasly undercuts his switch backs to get it get it back on the inside and now it's just a pure drag race we've not got too much battery to use uh, left but we've both got DRS and that is just going to be us nipping ahead just about as we get to the next apex into P11 so one more position and we will be into the points paying positions for the first time in this race but Dragovic leads the way then confirmation from Verstappen to Leclerc in second and then, oh Bottas Bottas crashes into the wall of champions it's oh Mick Schumacher's out he's crashed into Bottas I think and as we enter the last corner we just, just get in time into the pits for a safety car. I was waiting because I saw there was yellow flags up the road. So I just made sure I was going slow enough into that corner. Maybe if that safety car came out and it did. So I just about dot back inside. And now we get a chance to make a free pit stop onto another set of mediums. So this will allow us to do a two stop. But it's kind of effectively like a, like a one stop because... Obviously, the free pit stop's going to close us right up. The only annoying thing is my team did not change my front wing. I had it on auto, and that was my mistake because I thought auto would have changed my front wing, but my team don't think my damage was that bad to warrant a change. I guess it kind of wasn't because I was doing okay in terms of pace, but would have preferred a new front wing, and that is why we've got a safety car. So Bottas crashes into the wall of champions, and then Schumacher, well, I don't know what he was doing. He just didn't move and just drove straight into the back of the flying fin so both of them are out of this grand prix um and again we did very well to just come in as the safety car came out to get that free pit stop so now we're on fresh mediums everyone else is gonna be on you know by the time we get going like 10 lap old medium tires so we're gonna have a massive pace advantage i'm still annoyed we didn't get we didn't get front wing change in there because it's a safety car pit stop the, the time lost for changing a front wing would have been, well, nothing because we would have bunched up again. So that's why I'm a bit annoyed at that specific reason, even though I can see why the, the game hasn't changed my front wing because it was on auto. And I guess the engineers just thought, oh, he, he's got good enough pace anyway. But I'm um, still frustrating not to make the complete most of it. But it is what it is. But we're definitely going to gain a lot here by being on fresher mediums and... Everyone else got one more pit stop to make. I've got one more pit stop to make. So this is a two stop. And unlike Singapore, I think it's really going to be nailed on and working. So we're now going back to green flag racing onto lap 11. Completely fresh mediums. And we're going to get that launch on Esteban Ocon to try and get the Gulf Porsche Williams into turn one. Sainz also making a similar move on Liam Lawson. Both of us having to go the long way round then through turns two. I think we've pretty much already got Ocon though. Can we even have a little go at Lawson though? Straight into the next corner. It's a cheeky dive on the inside using plenty of curb to make it possible but we do nip through into P14 and all these early positions. That's just going to open up the door more for us to attack the top 10 and now now with this ex this uh, free pit stop i'm so confident we could aim for minimum top five but uh, maybe heck even a podium with it with a change front wing and fresh soft tires at the end of the race because remember we have plenty of fresh softs because we didn't take part in q2 or q3 and both of those were rained out anyway so there is chances here and we're going to make a double overtook or try to on Sainz and Piastri taking some inspiration from Hulkenberg there though because he was the one who dive on Piastri and Sonoda so Hulkenberg made my teammate look foolish into that hairpin he's squeezed out Yuki and Yuki's getting scared off the road a little bit as he lets off the throttle underneath Hulkenberg's rear wing uh, that makes a bit more sense though Yuki's actually in the pit lane so there's no point in him fighting it so I don't know why he didn't come in Sonoda was on softs there 
So he must have started on soft. So that's a little bit frustrating from his side of the garage not to make the most of that safety car. But um, alas, we have to just deal with that and see how he does. But uh, you know, now we're P10 and we've got the whole top 10 ahead of us to try and attack there. It's still Leclerc in third place. Verstappen second, Drogovic first. But now I reckon we can actually go chasing after them if we can get past all these cars in good succession because when they make their pit stop, which will be earlier than us, they'll go on to hard tyres and that just won't be that quick compared to even my worn mediums and then we'll have the soft tyres to come. But right now, Hulkenberg is causing me some massive frustration. Really good defence from the German back in Formula 1 for the first time since his break before this season for Aston Martin. Can we go round the outside of the German? It's going to be ooh, very close to the wall and then a flat out drag race and seeing who can get the car up the gears quick enough. No DRS at this stage of course after the safety car so just on pure straight line speed and how much drag there is to each of our cars and under braking we're going to just get ahead of him. I was a bit worried he was going to keep his nose in. Thankfully, he didn't. So we're into P9. And now next up is Gasoline. His teammate, Lance Stroll, as the DRS gets activated. And yeah, even with this slightly broken wing, to be fair, I can see maybe now why, you know, the auto didn't think it needed changing. You know, obviously still free pit stop. But fast up at the Grand Prix with a slightly broken front wing. Pretty damn good. But that's actually more the tyre. Like, you know, we've got... You know, these, these mediums have only been on for four laps, really, of racing. And we make easy work of Gasly, whereas they've been on these uh, other cars for 14 whole laps. So that's the huge advantage we've got over everyone. And we're making light work of them as we're now up to Lance Stroll. But just like Hulkenberg, he may cause us a few issues that Aston Martin doesn't seem too bad on the braking, you know. And it's actually a bit of a more challenging car to overtake than the McLaren was of Gasly and even Piastri beforehand. And uh, Stroll's getting a bit of a long-range toe from Russell, who's also got in the slipstream of Magnussen. But we're going to catch Stroll napping in his home race down into that hairpin as the sun starts to break through the clouds here. And uh, this track will get warmer, which hopefully might even help us more out as we get onto the soft compound attire. But uh, we're closing up now to Russell. Not going to be close enough to make a move into this corner, but can we set one up into turn one as we go through the final two corners, close to the wall of champions, and then drifting off to the left. And we're going to commit to left hand side on the inside at turn one roll the car in Russell's still there on the outside so we have to go for the wider line then use a little bit of battery just as we go up the crest to get the move finished off and now next up Alexander Albon they're coming thick and fast Albon goes defensive to the inside to be fair to him we get very close to his uh, side pods we try and measure the right racing line but we've actually nailed it and we get a perfect exit and we're up into P5 now so we are in the top five so now you can see why I think we're I'm confident we can go for a podium today. Leclerc's only 3.2 seconds up the road. Verstappen's now coming to the pit. So they're starting to make their pit stops. Onto hard time. No. Oh, no. There's a puncher on the front right. What's happened there? There's a huge problem. Into turn one. The car's sp half spun. And all of a sudden, our front right tyre is not inflated at all. What the hell? And we just crossed the line for a new lap. So this is going to be deadly. Unless there's a full course safety car, which I kind of was hoping for when I started spinning. But no, it's still green flag racing. So I've got to trundle around with a front right tyre puncher whilst everyone's going at full pelt. So our race has, very much like my tyre, completely unravelled. One minute we were looking so good for a top four, looking to make a move on Magnus and pulling out to the right-hand side of him because he was keeping left, and we actually had just such an exit, I was almost pushing him through the final corner. So I thought I'd just carry on the momentum on the right-hand side bit of debris that I, I didn't think was going to be anything because I think it was from Bottas's crash, you know, so many laps ago. So I thought, oh, okay, just there visually not going to be anything. But no, it was legitimately there as a bit of debris and we've ran over it and it's given our front row a puncture. Now, by the time we get round to actually make a pit stop, we're already down to P16. So the damage has already well and truly been done as we nearly spin it into the pit lane because I couldn't even stop the car properly because the front puncher just is going to start spinning your car as soon as it locks up and oh no now why are we got why are we going so slow what we're crawling down the pit lane what is going on ah oh. <laughs> okay there was half a chance we could have salvaged something from this race if we had just come in 
change tyres, change front wing probably, onto softs, try and make the most of it, maybe try and get into the points by the end of it, you know, if maybe a safety car comes out, it'll help us. What is this? What is this glitch? We're trundling down the pit lane so slowly. And I know this is not the default speed you drive down the pit lane with a puncher. Because I, we did it at Jeddah. We drove down the pit lane at Jeddah with two punches. And it wasn't this slow. But I think it was due to the half spin and the reset into the pit lane that our cars lost all momentum. And at the moment, we've not even got into our pit box and we're crossing 70 seconds in the pit lane. We've, we've made the optimum turn in. Of course, we had about a few hours to press the button. Our team finally changes the front wing and tyres. But by the time we've completely finished this pit stop, it's going to be nearly, I reckon, 90 seconds in the pit lane. 88.9. That would You may as well round up to 90 seconds. 90 seconds in the pit lane. Our race is done. Our, we've been lapped by everyone. Esteban Ocon retires from this Grand Prix on lap 18, or it's my lap 18. The rest of the grid are on lap 19. Because that pit lane glitch, that slow speed glitch, has completely ruined our race. Lap 18, we've still got so many laps to go, but there's no way, there's no way I can recover. Even if there was a safety car, I want to point out, because this game doesn't have an unlap mechanic, I wouldn't even be able to unlap myself if I caught up to the grid under a safety car. So that's it. I did stay out a little bit to just see what would happen. And at, at the forefront, uh, Vettel somehow was in the lead of this race now uh, under all that chaos. Uh, but Leclerc sent one down the inside to get into P1. And he actually carried that over to the race win because I, I just basically had enough of driving around for nothing so far away from everyone so I just retired the car um, and Leclerc ended up winning that race so we actually watched the uh, the race winning overtake there to be fair to us but uh, at that point then I got fed up of watching on and basically driving around by myself like Mr. No Mate so uh, yeah that's it that's uh, frustrating that's really frustrating um, I can understand where the glitch came from because I half spun into the pit lane but it still shouldn't be happening. Like, that glitch ruined the entire race. Because there was still half a chance I could have maybe caught up to some people. Maybe. But after that, I was completely lapped by the whole field. So, Leclerc wins this race ahead of... I think it's Verstappen who got into second place. And then third place um, was... I think it was the, the, the uh, Golf Porsche Williams of Kevin Magnussen. Yeah. So, fantastic day in the office the Golf Porsche Williams, they get their first podium in a long, long while for the Williams team. Vettel went from P1 to P4, so that's going to be pretty frustrating for him. And Felipe Dragovic actually went out to the points because he made a second pit stop in that race. So after all of that, when I was saying he just wasn't, you know, good enough and he needs to be where Russell is, he's actually maybe hurt us a little bit and he's uh, driven a, a fantastic race to get a race win and get into second place of the championship. In terms of for us, you know, we had such a large margin that it still won't matter that much for us you know I'm still you know we still got a good cushion of over 20 points in this championship even with Leclerc catapulting above Dragovic but it's still just you know just frustrating individually as this race went of just like you know just it's just such a waste of like a race there obviously I can't help the puncher that's fair play you know if that happens it happens but the fact I then got dealt with that glitch at the end that didn't allow, that basically just didn't allow me to even finish off the race and try anything to get any kind of position I uh, was just frustrating but ultimately it was from the puncher, which was just horrid, horrid luck. Uh, but that's the way it goes in Formula 1 sometimes. But that is also why it's so good when you have a commanding lead like this in the championship. Because you can absorb these kind of hits. And we, we come out of Canada still pretty damn good in the championship. So can't really actually be too annoyed. Just forget about it. Let's move on to the next one. It'll be a difficult one next time out at Miami. But uh, raring to go to make amends for this race. And we're going to need to as well because in the construct. Is Leclerc's win and Sonoda being so down the order and me, of course, having no points means uh, Mercedes get back ahead in the Constructors' Championship. So there may not be, you know, the, the other guys around me might be struggling to keep up with me in the Drivers' Championship. We have 100% got a fight in the Constructors because I'm pretty much driving as myself as a Constructor because Sonoda, even though he showed flashes and yes, was good in Singapore, this race he was nowhere. Just, you know, I, I can't count on him because clearly it'll be a bit on and off. So uh, we can't, we have to just focus on ourselves are trying to get the maximum trying to fight Mercedes but guys nonetheless uh, annoying 
glitch aside uh, with this uh, with this fantastic game aside if you did enjoy the video hit the like button let me know what you thought in the comments below if you're new around here then do get subscribed for weekly formula on content i'll see you guys next time goodbye